We are joined now by Matt Holland. Matt, how are you getting on? Yeah, good, thank you. Yourselves? All good, all good. Seems to have been a bit of a mixed reaction to last night's game. Kenny Cunningham erred on the side of positivity uh, about half an hour ago here on the show. What was your take on how it went for Stephen Kenny and his first game? Yeah, I'd probably um, edge towards Kenny's thoughts as well. I think there was, you know, um, it, it was difficult for Stephen having had such a short build up really to the game. Uh, and the, the stage of the season that it comes at without the boys having had a, had a game at club level either. So I think it came at a difficult time. He had very few training sessions to work on what he wanted to do. Um, but I think there were signs that, he, or you certainly saw what he was trying to implement to the team. Um, I think when you look back at, at the stats and, you know, having 62% possession of the ball, something we're not necessarily used to um, with an island national team. Um, so that was that was something, you know, we had more shots than the opposition. I thought we were better than Bulgaria. Um, we, we probably didn't threaten the goal often enough uh, and we lacked a cutting edge in the final third at times, but I think there were positive signs. Um, yeah, of course, you, you're going to look at it and pick bones in it and say there was things that, that, you know, certainly need working on. Defensively, I felt we were a little bit open at times, particularly with the two fullbacks pushed on. There was space down the sides of the, the centre-halves and the, the gap between the two centre-backs was too big at times. It's funny, actually, because when I was I was looking at the players that played in that back four uh, last night, um, they all play in a back three at club level uh, and yet all asked to play in a back four. So it didn't necessarily suit them, the system. Uh, and I do wonder going forward whether that's something that, that Stephen might have a look at and think that with the personnel he's got at the back, uh, he might think about going to a back three. How big a deal is that if you go from playing one system at club level to playing one system at international level? Because... There are going to be changes between the two setups. You've got a different manager, you've got different teammates beside you. Surely the system is just another thing into that uh, melting pot of factors. Is it sometimes overplayed that you know Matt Doherty is a right wing back for his club, but is a right back for Ireland? So should the same attributes not come into play? Well, I think I think it is a totally different position. You know, I, I know that you, you look at him; he's made that move to Spurs now, um, and they play a back four. But actually, if you look at the way Spurs play, and Serge Aurier last season played almost like a, a, as a right wing back, and I expect him to do the same um, for, for Spurs. Um, so I, I don't think it'll affect him at club level. But when he's asked to do it at international level, like last night, I don't think it suited him at all. You know, we didn't see him in those attacking positions that we. we I, don't know, I think he made one one run into the box where he got he got his head onto it sort of in the second half. But but generally, we didn't see him in the attacking positions that we we're, we're so used to. Um, I, I think we're asking Darren Randolph to play out from the back um, and you want the players to be comfortable in doing that uh, and, and I'm not sure that we, we look particularly comfortable at times um, getting the ball deep at times I think if we had a back three we'd feel a little bit more secure in trying to venture forward I mean there's a couple of times when the midfield were asking the centre half to bring it into, into the middle of the pitch well that was leaving too many spaces for my liking um, but if they had a back three, then that might might suit them better. I, I just I just think it's it's difficult to step from from playing in, in a back three regularly at club level to then go and play in a back four. Uh, and do you think, as manager Stephen Kenny, should essentially abandon his back four philosophy for that sake? Because it's it's a valid point. If you look at your best four defenders, and there is a legitimate case to be made that they are comfortable in a different system, you could absolutely change your system to that. Is it is it worth? The offset, the, the the fact that you are going well, to be abandoning what you've done over the previous years. Well, I think it's I think it's worth looking at. Right. Um, the the problem is that uh, he, he doesn't necessarily have the time to do that because obviously you know, the big game is next month against Slovakia. Um, he's only got one game really in in, in uh, on Sunday against Finland to to have a look at it if he decided to to go that way. Um, so it is it is a difficult one when you're used to playing a certain system as a, as a manager and you want your team to play in a certain way. It's difficult to abandon that at such short notice with, with with the games meaning so much as well. Obviously, these are National League games, and, and then you, you've got the big qualifier as well um, next month against Slovakia, and then the, hopefully the month after uh, against um, Bosnia or Northern Ireland. So um, it, it's a difficult one for him. I mean, I, I just think it's it's something that's worth looking at anyway. Uh, let's talk about the midfield, Matt, because James McCarthy has come in for some criticism after the match. John Giles was on the show last night saying essentially that he didn't impose himself enough on the game. What was your opinion of his performance last night? Uh, I thought he struggled a bit. Um, I thought he struggled in possession of the ball. Uh, I thought he gave it away too, too often. Um, 
so yeah, it, it wasn't his best performance by any stretch of the imagination. Um, he can play better, um, but in that position, he, I think that the most important thing is keeping the ball, and and that's something I, I felt he, he didn't do well enough. Um, I think we all know his attributes in terms of trying to close people down and, and you know snuff the opposition threat out. Um, but when he's on the ball, I think he has to do a bit more with it. Um, I mean, that's probably a, a, something that we're going to have to look at, creativity from the middle of the pitch, um, trying to look forward at times, because as I say, the, the, the cutting edge wasn't quite there last night. I think we just need to be a bit more pr progressive with our passing. It's difficult for me to say because I was someone who was quite safe with my passing. Um, it, but, you know, when you're playing with, with talented players alongside you, sometimes you, you don't have to do that. Um, but I think it's especially at the base of the midfield, like like James McCarthy was. I think it's important that he's he's more adventurous with his passing at times. Um, but also, I, I think he needed to keep the ball better as well. We could have done with uh, some of that safe passing, Matt, just in the lead into the the goal last night. Connor Huron's uh, uh, wayward pass. You, you mentioned there about. Um, we, we may need to look uh, to do better, obviously, in midfield again. Is, is that a sort of euphemism for we need to bring in others and who are they? Well, exactly. I mean, that's that's a million-dollar question, isn't it? And and um, that's something that's, that obviously Stephen and his coaching team are, are going to have to figure out. Um, I actually felt that, you know, before the game, the balance of that midfield looked pretty good, if I'm honest. I don't think it, it, um, it, it necessarily looked a problem. I, I actually I actually think that, that they could have swapped maybe maybe Connor and um, and James McCarthy around um, maybe could have played that way it, it, um, to start to start off with and and Connor trying to get on the ball from the back four and trying to play forward from there um, and use perhaps James McCarthy's energy with with Jeff Hendrick as well um, to get about the pitch get forward get in support of Adam Edo, who's, who was isolated at, at times um, so so maybe that's something that they they might look at as well. Um, but yeah, I, I actually felt before the game that the balance of the midfield looked pretty good. That's yeah. That... Sorry, go on, Adrian. No, I was just going to say for Sunday, Matt. Like, I mean, obviously Robbie Brady comes in last night and he's got a bit of energy about him. Um, like, maybe he hasn't been the player that everybody expected him to be uh, a few years back. But like, is he somebody that comes in? Like, I'm conscious. Obviously, there's there's so much in the melting pot here. There's like a brand new manager who's trying to introduce a new style, new way of playing. Like, there's there are reasons that McCarthy wasn't great last night. So we don't want to be too. Um, catastrophic about the whole thing, but like, does Brady come in and and do better in that role, or is there an Alan Brown, or like, if you were uh, in Stephen Kenny's boots ahead of Sunday, what would you do? Um, I'd I'd maybe look at, uh, at swapping Connor and James McCarthy. Okay. I think that's what that's what I would do personally. Um, I mean, I think I think in the, in the long term, Josh Cullen's someone that that's worth looking at, um, but. Yeah, I think I think in the in the short term, I'd potentially look at, at swapping the the roles of, of Connor and James McCarthy. I think that, that's just something I just want to pick up on, Matt, because that's an interesting point. Because it definitely seemed at times last night that the way the midfield was structured, we were missing something in front of the defence. Obviously, I'm basing that on the goal we conceded. Perhaps, of course, your centre back should do better in that situation, but perhaps they could also do with an extra layer of cover in certain points. It also felt we were lacking a bit of incision going forward in midfield. Do you think that that quick fix, that quick switch between those two players would alleviate both of those issues? Well, I, I don't necessarily think it's, it's Connor's biggest strength in terms of um, trying to snuff out the opposition yeah. threat, going with runners, um, you know, sensing danger particularly. I think he's, his um, biggest asset is getting his ability on the ball, his, his delivery, his passing ability. Um, so, I mean, that... that that's a difficult one um, because because obviously Stephen looked at James McCarthy and felt he's probably better at, at, at the defensive side of the game than, than Connor is. Um, but at the same time, if you're going to try and change the system and try to change the way you play and, and have more of the ball, which is what quite clearly what Stephen wants to do, you know we had 62% of it last night. Then it's important that you get the ball moving from the back into midfield uh, and and have someone at the base of the midfield who's who's capable of of getting you going. And, and that's why I think it, it can work in the short term. I, I mean, as I say, long term, he'll, he'll have ideas of what he wants to do. But in the short term, for a quick fix, I, I think it's it's something that you should look at. Aaron Connolly, Matt, was like one of the bright spots last night. Um, and, you know, at times, particularly in the first half, I know we were trying to play him in in certain ways, a couple of diagonal balls, maybe that they can come off. Um, and, and maybe even last night, we didn't fully play to his strengths. Like when you looked at his pace at times, 
Um, it was one of our main weapons around the back, and he tended to create maybe some of those chances himself. Like he's a very young player, still getting experience, been in and out of his team at club level. Um, but when you look at the rawness of him last night and how well he performed, he was one of our bright spots. We could bring him into the game a bit more. Is he the sort of player, or is this overstating it, but is he the sort of player that we could actually look to build a team around over the next few years? Well, he he, he was exciting last night, and um, I was impressed with his performance, particularly when you, when you think he's probably playing a bit out of position, really, because he, he's played in a 4 4 2 at Brighton and, and, and played up front. It's not you know necessarily his, his best role playing out wide, but he's capable of doing that. And we saw him cutting in a couple of times and maybe should have done better with one attempt. Um, uh, we should have probably at least tested the goalkeeper. But he was a bright spark. And um, I thought it was an encouraging performance from him, someone that we can, you know, certainly um, expect big things from in, in the years to come. In, in actual fact, you know, everyone keeps talking about the fact that we haven't replaced Robbie, and it, and it is a problem because the you know, goals are an issue in the team. But but on the face of it, there are a lot of young players coming through at the same time who we've got high hopes for. And Aaron's one of them. Obviously, Troy Parrott wasn't available um, last night. Um, obviously, Adam Eder, um, Oberfemi, who wasn't in the squad as well last night. There's a lot of young players, 19, 20 years of age, who we've got high hopes for. And um, so, yeah, Aaron's, Aaron's one of those. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think there's a, there's a good crop there who we can expect good things from in the next few years. Do you think we can operate in a way where we have three legitimate goal scorers up front? Because obviously, without your totemic figure and struggling in the, the post Robbie Keane era, it's unlikely you're going to find the number nine of that quality and uh, if he's going to be that prolific. How do we operate this in a way where Ida will chip in with a few goals, Connolly will chip in with a few goals, and whoever plays on the right or whoever plays through the middle will also chip in with a few goals? Yeah, I mean, obviously you need creativity, you need pace, um, and, and it's, it's the balancing act. And, I, and I actually, I'll go back to if you played a back three. Uh, if you played a back three, you can get two up top. So you could play... Connolly in his probably favourite position alongside, say, an Eder, for instance, um, at three midfield players. I think you get Matt Doherty into more advanced positions as well, uh, where he can be more of a threat in, in the uh, in the opposition box as well. Um, so it, it's a system I like. It's a system I played quite regularly with Ipswich and and and, and one that I felt was successful. Um, I, I just think it's I just think it, it's it's a system where you you have a good balance about your side and, and and particularly with the personnel that we've got in the squad at the moment, I think it's worth looking at. Um, if he's not going to do that, then you know, obviously, again, he's, he's got to work that out and, w and which way he goes. Maybe have two two sort of, I don't know, number 10s, if you like, around side of, uh, alongside a big number nine, which is something I think he likes. You know, someone who's going to run the channels, um, hold the ball up, which I thought, you know, Adam did quite well last night. He didn't, you know, he didn't do badly in that respect at all. Um, mm. But what he needed was support and a bit quicker to him. And he, he didn't necessarily get that last night. So if he's got two sort of number 10s just off him, then that, that might be might be something that works for us. So it'd be interesting to see how it, how it goes in, in the uh, in the next few games. Yeah, it'd be good to see Ida with some of that play a bit closer to goal. He tends to do a lot of it around the halfway line, I thought. But uh, just the, the, the you mentioned the system, Matt. And, like, there's been a huge amount of debate, obviously, about Matt Doherty versus Seamus Coleman, essentially. We were talking to, as Owen mentioned, Kenny Cunningham a bit earlier on, and he was saying it's not a case of getting the two of them in, in the team, that you got to pick one back your man and uh, and he's your guy. What do you think? Like, I mean, if he is going to stick with that system, if it's going to be 4 3 3, is there room to get the two of them in? Maybe Doherty in a more advanced role or does he have to just do as Kenny says and uh, pick his man and back his man no I think that, I think that's right I think I think it's um you pick one or the other I think if he changes his system then I think you can play both because I think you can play Seamus in a back three which is something that he's done for Everton so if he was to play a back three then absolutely I think you can play both of them and I think you've got someone in Seamus who all right he's not the biggest but he's someone who's comfortable on the ball um, and can play out from the back, and I think that's important as well. If you're gonna, if you're going to play a back three, that your two wider centre halves are very good on the ball um, uh, to get you going. So if you played, if you change the system and went went that way, then easily you could play, um, you could play Coleman on the right side of a back three, and then Matt Matt on that right wing back position. But if he's going to stick with a back four, I think it's one or the other. Right, and I get the sense that you're leaning slightly towards giving Matt Doherty another chance, Matt. And... Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I mean, you can't, you know, it's difficult to judge him on, on one one game, one yeah. performance. Um, so absolutely, you should get more, more opportunities. And it seems then that if you're 
picking the team for Sunday, it seems just a positional switch between Howard and McCarthy is what you want to see. Is there anything else on top of that? Would there be anybody new you'd bring into the starting eleven? Um, well, David McGoldrick might be fit. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I think I think you probably you'd probably select him if if he was. Um, but but other than that, now I can't I can't see too many changes now. Matt Holland, great chatting to you as always. Thanks, million for taking the call. You too. Speak to you soon.